I was charged with the idea of speaking to you about sex, business, and rock and roll. Now, if you all came along to hear any of those three things, I have to disappoint you now. With 18 minutes, there just isn't time to do the sex. We'll be talking about business and rock and roll. Um, so, sex is gone I'm from, from the list. But we do have time to talk about business leadership and what that's got to do with music. Who's a musician in here? Oh, quite a few. Now, don't, don't argue with me because there isn't time in the 18 minutes. But in music, there's room to have a sort of... All music has a structure. It has room for creativity and improvisation. If you're any good, you have an audience. If you're John Otway, you have 29,000 pressed people to, to sell your single. So we're going to explore the idea of having a score, improvisation and an audience in this time. But before we do that, let's hear someone who's actually a practicing musician and indeed a practicing chief executive. I say practicing because Tim would admit that he hasn't got this right. So this is Tim Smith talking about music and leadership, and it's a very happy accident that our earlier speakers mentioned Tim. What they didn't mention, however, that Tim uh, has a misspent youth in producing Barry Manilow records, no, writing them, and producing Motorhead. Now that's about as diverse as it gets, really. And anyone that don't like Barry Manilow, don't be critical, they're all number ones. So this is Tim Smith on an alternative view on leadership that brings the, some ideas from music to this. There was one day I was asked to do an advertisement um, for a product, they wanted something classical. And I looked at the opening bars of Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto in B-flat minor, you know, bum, 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 you know, it's really famous. And I got the computer up and I was putting in the first notes of the whole thing to get the first thing. And I, th I think I'm right in saying there's like 47, 48 instruments playing right at the start. But I was up to like instrument 46 and it was sounding like the most terrible noise. It was just, I, I must have programmed it wrong, I thought, but anyway, I'll do the last two things. And the last two things went in and suddenly wallop, I was like plastered against the back of the room and it was perfect. And I thought that, I understood for the first time in my life, in my life what genius was. Actually genius, this person had conceived in their head of the different sonics that were required to create that wall of sound. You can't get it on a piano, you can't do it on a guitar, you need all that dissonance and that big thing. And that became for me a tremendous metaphor about uh, building teams. And that's how I see it. I'm aware that you need the dissonance, you need the order, it's, it's, it's all the talents, and it's a terrible cliche. People always talk about you need all the talents, but so often people hire people like them or they get rid of people who are a bit edgy. And actually you need all of that ferment to create a sense of rigor, to create a sense of challenge, and also great comfort when everybody suddenly goes, yes. So we'll have to leave the sort of intellectual material now and move on to something a bit more practical. Uh, by the end of this, if you actually want to come on stage and play, you can play the triangle or various other things. And then we have some guitars here. So if you fancy a quick blast at something, even if we turn you off so that nobody can hear you, uh, so it doesn't exclude anyone here, you could sort of fake it till you make it. Um, Quick music lesson for the non-musical or the musical. There are 12 intervals in an octave. I did some work for the Metropolitan Police re recently in the DP, the Diplomatic Protection Corps, and the chief executive, or whatever they call them in the police, said, no, she said, because uh, I said there were 12 notes in, a, in an octave. She said, they're intervals, and she plays the viola, so she's right. So I've now corrected that. There are some conventions in music, such as harmony or accountancy. You know, drummers do accountancy, don't they? And of course, the idea in rock and roll is to bend or break them, depending on what sort of music you're playing. That's the end of the music lesson. We can't talk about music, we can see it in action. So if you think you can't come on stage and play, let's have a look at what some, uh, a load of scouts did at a jamboree. So um, we set a jamboree up a couple of years ago. A friend of mine is the uh, human resources director at the um, Natural History Museum, but he runs the scouts in Kent. And uh, at seven o'clock, they were all strumming along to Jimi Hendrix. And then we gave them the instruments and some assistance. And then they came up to me and said, do you know gay bar? <laughs> and what would you say if someone said that to you? Of course, you have to say yes if you're conforming to this idea that anyone can do it. I said, yeah, how's it go? They said, you don't need a score in, in rock music. It goes, it's in D. It goes D, C and A. And it says, at the gay bar. I thought, well, we've learned that, haven't we? This is a number one. So let's have a look, see what some scouts do with no practice whatsoever.
riffs for a moment. Who knows what a riff is? This is an audience participation bit, so someone's going to say something like... A repeated chord protect. Where did you get that from, sir? Well, no, no, it just came did it? Oh my God! Uh, yes, it's a repeated chord protect progression, popularly known in rock music, but also in classical music. Um, Ravel's bolero. We can't intellectualise about riffs. This isn't a real definition, but there is riffs uh, personified. We can, however, try some out. <laughs> Purple Rain, probably borrowed from, sorry Prince. Can anyone sing it? Go on. <laughs> Go. Don't hu hurry up about it, go on. <laughs> What's the next word? Mama, just what? Killed a man. Good, good idea. Um, what next? Put a gun against his neck, pull the trigger. Interesting. You know all the words of that song, it's about 35 years old. Uh, what's your company mission statement? Can anyone do that in rhyming slang? <laughs> yeah, interesting, interesting. The musical point here, that since we have only 18 minutes, is that with a f just a few notes, you can make an awful lot of music by just mixing up the same notes. And the same, of course, is true in business and in your personal life. By recombining things, you get quite different results. This is possibly the first time that you'll have noticed that Wannabe by the Spice Girls was actually stolen from Smoke on the Water. I don't know that's necessarily true, but why spoil the story, eh? So smoke on the Water first. <laughs> By the way, Richie Blackmore, who wrote that, was heavily criticised for it being so simple. He said, it's just four notes. And he said, why do people have a go at rock stars? Said, for God's sake, Beethoven's fifth is just four notes. And nobody said anything about... <laughs> Same thing. Um, wannabe. <laughs> and someone will go... A sick, a sick, ah! <laughs> that in music you have scales, you know, like sort of a conventional scales. Like That's a scale, but you can rearrange them a great deal to make lots of different music. So constraints, often people in public services say to me, Peter, we can't do anything in public services because we have so many governmental constraints and rules and regulations and people in pharmaceuticals say the same things to me. Absolute rubbish, of course. Uh, people in public services are very, very good at getting round constraints. And indeed, some people, some inventors, like nothing more than someone telling them it can't be done. Dyson being a very good example of someone who uh, was rather inspired by someone saying you couldn't do it and his, his vacuum cleaner wouldn't suck. Combination. People say that creativity is all about breakthrough, radical creativity like the steam engine. Absolute rubbish. That's true. But actually a lot of creativity is about combining things that didn't seem to fit together. First Direct in the banking world are the only bank that I can think of that can manage to combine the word banking and relationships in the same sentence. Finally, convergence can be very creative. The, you know, the popular wisdom that you should diverge endlessly and just constantly diverge. Well, there's a lot of business failures that come out of people saying, I've got a great idea, but they never follow it through. It's what was being said earlier this afternoon. Convergence can be creative. And the example of the iPod, which has been overworked, is still a good example of something that brings together a load of things that you previously had to do separately. So, you know, creativity doesn't always have to be breakthrough creativity. And I think you can learn those sorts of things from music.